Hello, welcome to another Synesthesia tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about presets and what they are, how to use them, how to incorporate them into your performances and into your playlists. Okay, so let's say I've got this scene open and I'm playing with the controls and I find some layout that I like, like that. Um, what I can do with presets is I can save this exact control layout so that I can very easily recall it without having to set each of those sliders independently. So to make a preset, just come to the preset palette, which is the second tab over here, and where it says create new preset, just give it a name, like fire portal suite, and then hit the check mark. Okay, so now we've got a preset. So I can come up here and hit default, and then come back here and trigger this preset, and it jumps right to it. Okay, so uh, let's make another preset. Here I'll just mash the random button until we find something that looks interesting. Um, okay, sure, why not? Uh, call this dark zone. Okay, so I've got a few presets now, and they're all right here, and I can just hop between them. Okay, so let's get a little bit deeper on presets, because you'll notice that there are these three columns, scene, meta, and media, for every preset. A preset is actually not just saving the scene controls, it's also saving the layout of the meta controls and the media. So let's make a more complex preset here. Choose some media. Maybe we'll do this, some flashing, and we'll turn gamma down. Maybe we'll mirror it, and and then we'll hue shift it. How about over to cyan? Okay, cool. Let's call it cyan. Okay. Okay, so watch as I switch between cyan and fire portal the meta controls actually get returned to defaults on Fire Portal because that's how we saved this preset. And on Cyan, the state of the meta controls is preserved with how it was when I made this preset. Um, you'll notice that the media is also running in the scene, right? And here it's switching back to none, and here it's switching back to this media. Let's explain this presets palette a little better. So the options you have here are you can click on the play button to trigger it, you've got the name of the preset, and then you've got these three columns of checkboxes. So these are actually the preset channels. And if, so you can see if you hover, right, uh, scene controls channel, and the channel status is active. Here's the meta controls channel for this one, and the channel status is muted. So this basically allows you to turn on or off a given channel for a given preset. So I can make these two presets only affect the scene controls. And I can come over here, play with my meta controls, and still be triggering these presets without them influencing the meta controls at all. right? But then if I've got a preset like Cyan that has scene, meta, and media all active, if I click that, it's going to change the meta controls and the scene controls and the media because all of those channels are active instead of muted. Let's make a preset that's meta controls only. So I want it quad mirrored and I want the hue, I want it kind of green, super saturated and contrasty. Let's just act like that's a great preset. So we'll call this contrasty. So I can save this as a preset and then uncheck the scene and media. So now let's go back to our fire portal and let's say, okay, cool. We're going back and forth between the dark zone and the fire portal. And now I want to hit contrasty. I can now go back and forth between the dark zone and the fire portal, but I'm in this contrasty quad mirrored uh, meta control state, right? So let's look at the edit side of this tab. 
So there's the perform side that just keeps things simple. Uh, so there's not too many buttons on the screen if you're in the middle of a performance. And then there's the edit side. And so edit actually allows you to change the name of a preset. So uh, cyan flashy, let's say I didn't quite name this preset properly. Okay, cool. So that just updated the name. And then you've also got these uh, little save buttons and your delete button over here. But let's say this preset, I didn't quite like the color on it and I wanted to get the color more like that. Okay, so I just changed the hue. I could just duplicate this preset and save it as a new one, but instead, if I wanna just fix this preset, then you can just click on the little save button for a certain channel. So if I click save here, uh, that just updated the meta controls channel of this preset. So if I come back to it, yep, it's in that purple state instead of the cyan state. Uh, and the same goes for media. Let's say I actually wanted this to launch with uh, a different media. Um, then I can just choose that new media and click the save button there. Yeah, and you can always uh, duplicate a preset too. Uh, cyan 2 and make this new one a slight variation of the old one. So I'll save the, uh, let's say the size gets smaller. Okay, so I'll save the scene controls here because I want that size to be there. And then I'll also save the hue changes I made by clicking that. Cool. Okay, so this I think brings us to our next topic, which are the fav slots up here. So uh, this is definitely a pretty confusing feature for new users, but uh, it's really powerful and worth it to learn how to master. So what these are, are basically a very quick way to recall any presets you have uh, without having to come over to the presets palette. The way you do it is you just click on the plus up here and then click on the drop down. And now I have access to all the presets that I've made for this scene. So obviously if you come up here uh, on a scene that doesn't have any presets yet and click on the plus, you won't uh, have any options. So you have to already have presets made to use, to, to put in the fav slots basically. Okay, so then yeah, if I wanna trigger this now that it's up in a fav slot, um, I can actually just click up here. So I could still have this on my playlist during my performance and up here, whatever scene I select, I'll get the presets for that particular scene uh, up there in the fav slots. So let's go back to our scene. There they are and you can trigger them. The other great thing about fav slots is that they are MIDI mappable. So if you come over to the MIDI tab and click on fav slots, here you have all your fav slots. So if you have a MIDI device, you can click here and just say, take 10 buttons on your MIDI device and map each of these different fav slots. And then for any given scene, you've got a really easy way to progress through that scene, just working with those same 10 buttons, as long as you take the time ahead of time to make presets for the scene and actually put them in the fav slots in the order you wanna go. So maybe this is the start of the scene, this is yeah, the second look for the scene, the third look for the scene, the fourth look for the scene, and you can just hit those buttons, boom, 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 and not have to worry about uh, too much MIDI mapping, right? That's fav slots, and they're super useful. There's one other special thing about the fav slots, and that's this first slot. So this first slot is already mapped to default, and it's colored gold. And this is actually a special slot where whatever uh, preset you put in your gold slot, this is the way the scene will start now. So if I come back to a different scene and then I am in the middle of a show and I'm launching this, you see instead of launching with the default look, right, it actually launched with this fire portal already active. You know, some, some people have said in the past, like, I, I really want a way to make it so that the scene doesn't just start like this every single time I start it, right? I want it to actually start on a different look. 
that's what the gold slot is for. So you can also go through, at the very least, for all these scenes, if you don't like the way that they start, you can make a preset for them, call it you know, my default or something, and put that up in the gold slot for each of the scenes. Okay, so this brings us to the next really powerful way to use presets, which is to incorporate them into a playlist. So let's make a new playlist by coming to the Playlist tab and then going to the Edit side of the Playlist tab. And then down here where it says Create New Playlist, just type in a name. And we've got a new playlist. Okay, so then let's add a scene to the playlist by coming over here and clicking on the plus and we've got our scene in the playlist. So there's a couple things to notice here. First is this default. That's actually the preset that this entry in the playlist is going to use. So if you click on that, uh, you see we've got all of our presets for this scene. So I could choose Dark Zone, and now if I trigger this, it's going to start the scene on this preset. So you could even add multiple copies of the same scene to a playlist and have them on different presets. So that's actually a pretty powerful way to perform as well. Uh, instead of using the fav slots up here, you can have your uh, different presets saved to a playlist and then just hit next right, to go to the next. And these buttons are MIDI mappable as well. So um, another thing to notice about this is the little checkbox right here. So this is kind of subtle, but this is actually, if you hover it, it says toggle gold preset. So instead, if I don't want to, because you'll notice if I add any scene here, it is by default, when it, you add it to the playlist, it starts with the default preset. Um, instead, if I want to use my special gold preset that I added up here, then you can just check this gold box. Um, and that means it won't be using Dark Zone here. It's going to be using whatever preset is saved in the gold slot up here. Yeah, that is basically everything you need to know about how to use presets. All right, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped some of you. If you want more tips on how to use synesthesia, uh, you can check out the rest of the tutorial videos we've got, or you can read our FAQ, which has a ton of useful information. And you can also join our Facebook or Discord user groups to chat with other users and get help directly from us.